Hello, Niche Lady here. I have another kind of impromptu um, live haul unboxing kind of a thing. Um, as I did last week, I bought some more stuff from this online auction, this antique store that's going out of business. They're just putting everything up on auction. And I got some more goodies. And so I have not unboxed them yet. I have not seen, I mean, I know what I bought. I know what I bid on, but I have not seen them in person. I, there was no preview. So I'm going to unbox now and do a little research as I go. So, hmm, what do I start with? <laughs> oh, that was loud. Um, I got this. Oh, and let me, I'm going to, I have to go peek over here at my little invoice to know what I paid for this stuff. I paid, where is this? I don't even know. I know one thing I bought was this heater that ended up, no, oh, I paid six bucks. I paid, ooh, did you hear my ka just went off? I paid six dollars for this because... Now I knew it, I knew it wasn't old. It's got a very primitive look, though. It kind of reminds me of the those, those the pie the pie keeper. Am I saying that right? The pie keeper things. Yeah. What's interesting is it's you know it's it can be mounted on a wall here or it can hang. My thought was to put a little floral display in here and then resell it. Um, so six bucks and there it is. So I'm not going to look this one up because I have to do something with it to give it the value that I want it to have. Notice my awesome son, Noah, moved these bookcases into my office for me today. So now I have shelves behind me. I have shelves to the right of me. I am, I am in shelf heaven. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they will be used to like put some of my reference books that I use often and also to conduct the live sales that I do. So hi everyone popping on. Let's see who's here. Mid-Century Wasted. Hello, Nishana and Lakefront Thrift. Which lake? Which lake are you in front of? Uh, Bree. And of course, my awesome Melissa. Hello, Melissa. I just packed up your goodie box of stuff. Oh, yeah. Anybody's on here that purchased things from my last live sale? I'm telling you, it's been a week. Um, I had every intention of getting everything out on Tuesday, which is my norm. But when I went to go ship, I was out of ink to print out my packing slips. And then I got the ink. And then I was out of the right size boxes and it's all good though. I got all caught up now. It is amazing that when you move, you kind of forget all the things that you take for granted that you use on a daily basis. And so it becomes really apparent when they're not here. <laughs> that, bye. But I'm super excited as I'm putting things in place and getting everything organized how how awesome is going to be when it's all done because i've totally started this like with the vision of how it's going to be from the start instead of kind of living in a space and then going oh well i could do that with that space and i could do that with that no i picked this place because of the possibility so super excited let's see who else snuck in let's see oh my goodness the you guys, you, you start talking fast. Hold on, hold on. I got Lorraine in here, Stamps for Fun, Jeanette Armstrong, Julia Hardy, Danelle Frazier, Cheryl Ross, Rhonda Smith. I'm, oh, and oh, what time is it in Melbourne, Australia? I always am fascinated by the time differences. Linda Morgan, Ellen Stanley, Joanne Johnson, Tri State Picker Mom. Hello, hello. Another one of my very, very special ladies here. You'll see the wrenches by their name. They help keep things in line over in the chats that can get a little crazy sometimes. Linda Ristain. I hope I said that right. Jody Eli from Michigan. Tammy A. 
You just picked up a bunch of auction stuff too. Awesome. Okay, I'm in front of Shemong out in Toronto, Peterborough area. Oh, okay, so Lakefront Thrift, meet my friend Melissa, who is also in Canada. I don't know. Melissa, where, how close are you to Toronto? Because I know, I know Canada's big. <laughs> it's kind of like the United States. It's got a, like an East Coast and a West Coast. I don't know how close anything is. Cheryl Ross, pajama bottom mama. I love it. I love it. I'm kind of in my jammy. No, I'm in my lounge pants. I'm in my lounge pants, not jammies. I still, when I'm done with this, I have to run over to my old residence. Couple reasons. I'm mainly going over tonight instead of in the morning is because I have to check on my tortoises who have not made the move yet. And we had a little bit of a warm day. And just a little, uh, as a little tortoise information is that they go into this thing called brumation, which is kind of a reptile form of hibernation. Mammals hibernate, reptiles brumate. But during brumation, they can come out, get a drink, kind of wander around for a few minutes, and then go back in their den. And because today was a little bit on the warm side, I need to go just for my own anxiety. I need to go make sure nobody came out and got stuck outside of the den where they can now get warm as it gets cold tonight again. So... Yeah, so I'm going to go over there, and while I'm there, I'm going to pick up some more stuff. So four to five hours, Toronto is five to six hours. Okay, all right, all right. Why is it all you Canadians have to do like a Canadian get-together kind of a thing? I've got Perfecting Pearls here, Diana Burgos from Florida. Did I say that right? I always want to say those names right. Janelle Sloan, hello from Wisconsin. Janelle, my dad lives in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Yeah, I know, I know, I know Canada's huge. And like, I thought about it after the words came out of my mouth. I was like, um, oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. Oh, Linda lives near San Diego and you go to the swap meet where I go. Nice. Ellen Stanley. You started your eBay last week. That's all. And you made a sale already. Yay. I really want sound effects on here. I want to do like a roaring crowd clapping. That would be awesome. Jamie, your, your hubby went to pick up your online auction winnings and the car broke down on the freeway. Oh, <laughs> That's the worst. I am in the market for, and I, I say a new vehicle, but it would just be new to me. I don't, I don't ever go and buy brand new off the lot because I know how that whole depreciation thing works. So I am looking for something on the, the newer side, like a 2017 to 2020 something. Um, I just can't really figure out what I want, but I have one of those beasts. It's got 165,000 miles. It's been dependable. It's been a good car. I cannot knock it, but sometimes it doesn't want to start unless I wiggle some of the cords because there's like a short somewhere and um, it leaks oil. And now there's something with the oil thing where now it thinks it needs an oil change all the time. And it's just time. It's just time. I have both back windows are taped up with gorilla tape because the motors are broken. It's just time. It's been paid off for almost two years though. So that's been pretty darn cool. <laughs> but Oh, that's interesting. Don't get a Dodge because I was told by a mechanic that like Dodge Durango's are extremely reliable. So I was actually kind of looking at those. I just don't know if I want a truck. I'm kind of leaning toward, I want a pickup truck really bad, but also I'm trying to be sensible and maybe get a small SUV with really good gas mileage, at least for a while. I don't know, I don't know. Tammy A asks, how far is Kingman from Vegas? A couple hours, a couple hours. It's, I go, well, 
I haven't been out with my friend who does the house cleanouts um, like for ages, but we always go out to Kingman, Laughlin, Bullhead City area. Yeah, it's a couple hours. I, I really want to go out. I like the Goodwills out that way. So um, Bree, let's go shopping one day. Okay. Because I don't like to shop alone when I go like to strange city. Like I know my Goodwills out here. I'm really comfortable, but I am not a good like go out of my comfort zone kind of thing. Yeah, I know Toyotas are Toyotas are very good. Yeah, I know Toyota. I've I've had I've had a Forerunner. I'll tell you something else. I know we're. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to the stuff. I promise. Um, <laughs> Toyotas are amazing, safe vehicles. And let me just give a little story. Here's a little, and then we're gonna get into the stuff. Um, many years ago, let's see. Oh gosh, 15 years ago, I want to say. We lived on a ranch. I raised horses and we had a Toyota 4Runner. We went out that night. We came home. We left everything in the We were so tired. We left everything in the car. Our wallets, our phones, like we just crawled into the house and went to bed. And I mean, we lived on a ranch with these big wrought iron gates and, and guard dogs. And um, somebody, uh, well, let me, let me just tell you. So I, I got up that morning. I went to go out to feed the, the horses and the goats. And I'm just like, I'm cruising along. I'm doing my chores. And I, I look over at like our front gates. And there is a police officer, not like in clear view, but he's standing like, and he's doing the whole, you know, looking around the post. So I'm like, I'm looking around me for a minute and I'm like, what's going on? So he kind of he like, he walks out, he's got his hand on his gun and he walks out and he's like, are you here alone? I'm like, no, no, my husband's inside sleeping. He goes, is that Steve Ackerman? I'm like, yes, yes. Has he been here all night? I'm like, yes. And then, and then I looked and it, oh no, he goes, he goes, are you missing something? That's what it was. He goes, are you missing something? And I look around and that's when I realized the car was missing. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? And he goes, um, we need to see Mr. Ackerman. So I had like knock on the window of our bedroom door, like, Steve, Steve, get out here, get out here. And he comes crawling out and we hear the cop like on his radio going, uh, negative, uh, this is not our suspect. So long story short, I know it's too late for that. Someone had stolen our car and gone and they'd done, um, they hit someone head on. Well, this is where it gets a little sad. They hit someone head on and um, the from, from what witnesses say, our forerunner was airborne about 20 feet, came down, rolled four times, and the guy crawled out and walked away and he was on the run. And sadly, the woman that he hit was killed. Um, and that still just shakes me to the core that our car was used in an accident that killed someone. But long story short, um, when we went to the impound yard to view the vehicle, you could not tell what kind of car it was. It literally was completely smashed. The engine was gone. The back was gone. But if you looked inside, Leg room, head room, intact. Like the fact that somebody survived that and was on the run, um, like those are amazing vehicles. So I know it was, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yes, they did end up finding and arresting him because he went and he carjacked a car from someone else. And then he passed out in an intersection. And that's how they got him. Also, 
the car would that he stole was on empty. <laughs> it was like below E. And so he, this is how brazen this guy was. He went and got gas with our credit card because our wallets had been left in there too. So we went and got gas with our credit card. So he was on like, a, yeah, he's, he's spending a goodly amount of time in the popo. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So let's get to some stuff. Let's get to some stuff. <laughs> now that I've told my like fun story there. Um, let me look up what I paid for this first. Let me share. Let me share. What is this? Um, what is? I can't even find. Don't you hate that when you can't find stuff on your on your invoice? Maybe they just gave it to me free. I bought another really cool thing that uh, they notified me. This is not on my invoice. And I got to tell you. Oh, maybe it is. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, because these are menus. I paid $7 for this lot. Yeah, I know. We went and got another Forerunner. We absolutely went and got another Forerunner after that. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five... I've got seven things in this lot that I paid $7 for. So I paid a dollar a piece for these. And these are menus from Hamburg America. Lenny. <laughs> um, I don't know. We're a celebration of life. Fourth of. So there's a dinner. It's got. So. I'm thinking this was a special event on board the SS Hamburg, Sunday, July 4th, 1937. It's got this over here on this side. So 1937, but it does say it was a in celebration of the 4th of July. Oh, so there you go. So I got that one. And I got program der... Oh my goodness, I can't read that. Whatever that says. Okay, where are my where are my uh, Scandinavians here? Because I'm not even sure. Is that German? Is it German? Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. It is German. Now I should be able to break out a little bit of my German. Program der Orgsehenen Unterhaltungen, something like that. And then the whole thing in here is. Obviously in German there too. What does that say? Deinstag, Mittwoch, Donnerstag. Yeah. And yet it's in English on the other side. Well, that's kind of nice. Um, this one is also 1937. Yeah. I know German is so, it's so rough. <laughs> it's just so, it's not very poetic. Um, this one is Gobble Frush Gobble <laughs> Gobble Frustuck. There we go. Yeah. Luncheon. Hamburg America. So would this have been Is it I'm trying to figure out. Do they have cruise ships? They don't have German cruise ships, do they? Or would it have been a, like a train? I don't know. Oh, the Swedish. The Swedish chef on the Muppets. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a menu. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know for what. Yes, what? Yes, what? Train or cruise ship? Program of social events. Again, uh, Hamburg. Maybe somebody can do a little Google search for me real quick. I just, I don't know. I thought they were cool for, you know, so... Because I'm thinking cruise ship because I keep seeing the ship. Like, come on, they're showing me a ship. That is the Drymaster Deutschland das erste Hapak Schief. 1847 to 1937. Mostly oi, 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 oi. Yeah, and it's in English, which is very interesting. On board... The SS Hamburg. That's a ship. That's a ship. Uh, so it's a German ship menu. They had eggs Romanoff, iced honeydew melon, 
and table celery, clear oxtail soup and cream of chicken, boiled salmon sauce hollandaise, asparagus with Westphalian ham, melted butter, parsley potatoes, roast spring chicken, lettuce mixed compote, ice bomb jubilee, Ooh, that sounds good right there. Uh, fancy pastry, cheese, fruit, mocha, miniardices, whatever the, come on, what is that word? What is that word right there? What is that? <laughs> the new, but it's making me hungry. <laughs> Noah's supposed to be cooking while I'm doing this. Alm Kurta Inder Valip by Schlersi. Swear to you, that's what I just read right there. Look at those ladies. Look at those fine German ladies right there. Hops Maltzeit dinner. This one's a little bit rougher. I'm probably going to sell these all together in my next live sale. Oh, my next live sale is tomorrow, isn't it? I'll sell these tomorrow in my live sale. So you guys get the inside scoop on what's coming up in the live sale tomorrow. Tomorrow's mostly jewelry, but I do throw in some smalls. I throw in stuff that can go first class. That's that's what I do tomorrow. It's like the first class sale. And this is another, like a luncheon. Look at her. She's so, she's so sound of, of music. <laughs> this one is. July 1st, 1937, uh, delicacy salad, potato salad with cucumbers, pickles. Oh, I can, how do you say pickles in German? Gewurzgurken, Gewurzgurken. Okay, take it. Pearl onions is Pearl's Weibelm, Pearl's Weibelm. <laughs> okay, never mind. Sardines and tomatoes, mmm, yummy. Appetite Sild. No, I don't order that. I, I wouldn't recommend ordering that. Smoked ham. Grach, Grachurter Schinken. Smoked sausage and blood pudding. Mmm, not so yummy. Cream of asparagus consomme. Poached eggs on toast, tomato sauce. Fried weak fish. What's a weak fish? I personally like my, my fish kind of strong. <laughs> I like them to put up a little fight. Don't like the weak ones. They tend to be sickly. All right. Anyway, there's some lamb chops. Okay, we'll go on. We'll move on or I will never get this done. <laughs> but it's the fun. It's the fun hour. <laughs> I'll put those there. Okay. Now, a while back, I had... Uh, so, kafilta kaf fish? What's Nancy, what is kafilta fish? Oh, yeah, I'll totally. You guys want me to Google them now? You want me to? You went to me to live. Actually, I don't, I don't live Google. I live eBay first. Let me pull up eBay over here. What did I, oh, let me share my screen. Um, boop. Let me make my screen bigger so you can see it. All right. So I put in Hamburg menu. And you can see, look at that. Huh. Whoa. Whoa. That's like Cousin Rona Bob's big boy. <laughs> I'm just saying. What? Okay. They slimmed him up over the years, didn't they? Cause there's like, yeah, a little more. <laughs> That's funny. Oh look, uh, United American line. All right, Hamburger American line. Interesting. Steamship SS Westphalia, 30. Yeah, this is the Bob's big boy. I know a little more. <laughs> uh oh, what are you guys talking about? That's gross. Jefilte fish, yum. Oh, it's a Jewish thing? Yeah, I don't, mm, I don't do, uh, no sardines for me. Uh, I got another, I got another funny story about sardines though. 
All right. So yes, the menus do have value. They absolutely have American line, winter cruise. Yeah. Menus have value. Absolutely. Here we go. America line. There's a breakfast menu, 1750. I have seven of them. I have seven of them. So very cool. Okay. Let me come back to me. Um, sardine story. You guys will love this. So I had an Australian shepherd who we were inseparable. He was my travel mate. I used to show goats. I showed Nubian dairy goats and um, he went with me everywhere. And we were going uh, over to Nashville, Tennessee for our national event. So I was driving my pickup truck and pulling my 26 foot stock trailer filled with goats. Cause I had my friend's goats and my goats in there. And so we were stopping at places and getting things to eat. Well, she loved sardines. My friend did. And every time that she would open a can of sardines, she would give my dog the juice from the, uh Oh, somebody's in trouble. Yes, they are. Um, she would give my dog the juice from the sardines. Needless to say, my dog and her were so tight by the end of that trip. <laughs> it was so gross. <laughs> okay, I bought a bunch of vintage old pharmacy bottles and I paid like $6 a lot. So like two bucks a bottle. Now on this one, you can't really make out who done it except it says SKF and it does have a Smith and Klein down here. It used to have like all the directions, but it's got enough of it to verify what it was. And it still has its original little cap on here too. I don't know what year I'm not a, a bottle aficionado by any stretch. I know there's a lot to looking at how it's put together, how it, this part looks. And um, there, there is a site, I don't remember what it is. You can look up, I don't want to cross thread this. Noah did that yesterday on a Starbucks iced coffee and ended up having to throw it away because he couldn't get the cap off. Um, so I know that there is a site that will tell you what these maker's marks mean too. It's strictly for bottles, it's really cool. So there's that one. And then there's this little square one that actually is tablet triturates calomel from the Norwich Pharmacy Company in New York. Check that out. Oh, baby, we've come a long way, haven't we? And again, all these bottles will have some markings usually on the bottom. This one's actually marked Dorwich. Uh, we could look that one up real quick. Let's look. That'll be fun. All right, let's look up door witch bottle zero results for door witch bottle but i want you to look for door witch bottle so now we're going to see if there's any i did say door witch right yeah interesting so no it's because it's norwich don't mind me it's late it's been a long day <laughs> All right, let's go head over to Solds. This is the joy of doing live. <laughs> oh, you want me to hold up the item as I'm looking it up? Okay, so we're looking up this bottle right now. So check this out, Norwich. Very, very interesting. Of course, Cobalt Blues, always very, very sought after. Cali Norwich, Norwich Doo -doo -doo. dairy bottles. I am looking for an amber bottle. Yep, oh, we're getting closer here. Now these don't have the labels still on them. So you have to give it more value because it has the label. And I love, actually, you guys hear me say this. I love that I'm not finding it. Not finding it is awesome. I will take it. I know I'm going fast. I'm sorry, because I just don't think it's here. Yeah, so no results. Um, so this is cool. I like, I just, the history there. I actually am going to have to look up what calomel was for. Or if somebody over there wants to look, go, somebody tell me, or, oh, Brits say Norwich, Norwich. 
I wish I could say that with an accent. I would love to be able to do a proper English accent. Um, I, I, Eliza Doolittle was my idol. I saw My Fair Lady at the Pantages Theater when I was a young teenager and it's forever stuck in my brain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Okay, um, this one is Capsules Digifortis. Capsules, Capsules Digifortis. What was in there? Hmm. And dose as directed by physician. Standardize physiologically. So interesting. There's a patent number on here. So I could I could definitely look up an age on this. Don't know what it was for. But there's still lots of writing on this one. I just think these are so cool. Caramel was mercury. Oh, okay. There are so many things that were used back then that we would not dream of putting in our bodies now. <laughs> Digitalis probably for cardiac issues. Okay. All right. All right. Got it. Auntie K. Hello, Auntie K. So here's another lot. This one is Oh, I no idea. We'll talk something. Alcohol. 61% alcohol. <laughs> uh, gua guayac. Guayac. G-U-A-I-A-C. Two CCs of 61% alcohol. That'll make you feel better. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's see, there's a big one in here. Okay, this one's pretty much worn off. Gosh, that's a bummer. Salacylates is a word on here. Couple of, not very many words that I can make out. But this was a WSMC company bottle. So that will help me find some information on that bottle. As you can see there. And see the top. I know this top, the way this is done, means something. You can date it by that. I know. That'll fix what ails you. <laughs> All right. This is 1,000 tablets, number 442. Calomel and soda, one grain, sodium bicarb. There we go. Who's that little guy? I wonder where they use, well, I think they use the color glass to protect it from the sunlight and heat. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. This fascinating stuff here. Oh. There's some peas. Oh, there might be the rest of the label inside this bag. Hold on. Wahoo NF fourth edition. Wahoo. It's Wahoo. How much alcohol is in that? <laughs> uh, extract of Unimus. E-U-O-N-Y-M-U-S. Four grains of wahoo bark or root. Okay, what did you use wahoo for? I want to know what you used wahoo for. Somebody tell me what wahoo was for. John Wyeth and Brothers Incorporated, Philadelphia. Oh, this is fascinating. This is fascinating. I love this so much. Look at that. It's got the original cork in it still. All right, what was Wahoo used for? Come on, somebody tell me what Wahoo was used for. Ha! I love it. Look at this was in the package. So, ferro salata, ferro salata. I bet that goes on this on this one. It does. I can see. 
I wonder if there's a way to reattach that label. So I got a little bit more of the label and a little bit more of the mystery is solved. Yay. All right. Oh, it is disintegrating before my eyes. Don't do that. All right. Stay there. All right. And I got one more little out of bottles. Iron something? Iron? Oh. What is Wahoo though? Did somebody look up Wahoo? Waya, Waya, Waya who? What you said when you drank it? I want to know what Wahoo is for. <laughs> All right, this one, no label. It just has a five on the bottom, and it has a cork. It's got. It looks like it's the original cork. So these, this lot looks like um, they did not have labels, but they do have corks. Having the original cork is pretty cool. This one has a little remnant, nothing you can make out. But again, you can kind of figure out who makes the bottle at least by those marks on the bottom. That one has its cork too. Wahoo is a laxative. <laughs> oh my goodness, the bark is a traditional remedy for relieving occasional constipation. Wahoo is a powerful herb that should be used only under the supervision of an experienced herbalist or qualified practitioner. Wahoo! Okay. Glad I asked. <laughs> and then here is a little amber bottle with some numbers on the bottom. So there is that little lot. Yeah, and I'll, I'll put these in little lots. This won't be in tomorrow's sale. These are going to be in, in next week when I do like the hard goods. So, all right. What else? Oh, something breakable. Oh. Okay. All right. Now, this is stretch glass. And I paid. You guys will love this. Love this. Um, let me find it. Okay. They called it a blue possible Fenton nine inch jar and lid. $13. I paid $13. This is stretch glass all day long. See the stretch? See that beautiful stretch? There we go. Iridescence. Let's look this one up. Will be fun to look up. I'm moving my microphone. I hope that little screech didn't just like totally come across. Yes, I will show the stretch again in, a, in just a second. So I'm going to go blue stretch glass. This is how I look stuff up. Notice I'm not putting in what it is because every seller could put in something different. They could put in dish, they could put in vase, they could put in compote, they could put in candy dish. So I just start there. And I'm going to look and see also what other cool things are selling in the stretch glass world. So obviously an Epern is going to be good priced. But here's a plate made by Steuben. Epern and a, and a vase and an Epern. So Tiffany and Steuben make uh, stretch glass. Just uh, keep that in your memory banks. Got some swan vases. But I want to see the top selling of the candy dish. Yeah, this is like a Celeste Blue. Those are quite interesting, aren't they? Oh, Fenton. Ah, Fenton used the Celeste Blue. That's probably why she thought it was possibly Fenton. Because that is a Fenton color. But you can see there's many companies that made stretch glass. So, come on. Show me a candy dish. There's kind of a candy dish. Not quite the same. And again, there's the Fenton. I'm leaning toward this being the Fenton. The color, the color seems right. And this could be eBay just not wanting to give me proper are we not sorted by highest? We must not be. Thought I was by highest, but not, not to be. 
So not even finding, not even finding this one. There we go. Boom. Northwood. Northwood. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to see if the pattern on here is the same. Whew, not great pictures. Not great pictures. So this one does appear to be different. Mine has like some design to it. This one does not. So it's, it's not this one. Same shape. Boy, that one got me because it's the same shape. Satin doesn't have the iridescent. So satin glass is more like a frosted glass. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to put in candy dish. Probably not really a candy dish. And I'm going to make sure I'm sorted by, I am sorted by highest first. Can you guys hear that whistle? That is really awful. Uh, so it does look like it is Fenton. It does look like it is Fenton. And as you guys know, just because I see a seller sell two of these for $28.99, in no way is that going to influence me to sell this one for $28.99. Um, that's a little cray cray. $29.95. What you have to do is go look at what is available. There we go. I like seeing that number a lot better. It's a little different. There we go, $59.95. And again, as I always tell you guys, if you price up in this range, once those low ones sell out, the ones that are belonging to somebody who's not really maybe taking this business seriously, they just want to get rid of stuff, then you're left with the market value where it should be. This should be a $50, $60 candy dish for all intents and purposes um, because it's probably 19, I'm going to say 60s. That's where I put it. All right. I'm not sure I'm selling this one. Not sure I'm selling this one. Um, this is blue opalescent. This is what I personally collect. And I don't have this one. I have a taller one um, that is similar, but I don't have this one. So I'm probably going to hold on to this one, at least for a while. But we'll just stick you in there. They had lots of really nice, pretty blue glass. Now, I'm not real fond of grape patterns. So I probably will sell this one. Um, and we will go look this up because I don't know exactly who done it. But this should be fairly easy to find because of the grapes. So I'm going to show you a couple ways you can look things up. Obviously, we have eBay. We'll, we'll start there. So I would go blue opalescent glass grapes. Notice I didn't put in dish. I didn't put in anything yet. I just want to see what's out there. I'm going to go into solds, which will narrow it down a little more. Boom, did it boom. So see, 290 results. That's, you can get through 290 results. Um... So now I'm looking for the color and the pattern. Got to get past the Indiana glass. Whoa. Lots of Indiana glass. I had no idea the Indiana Harvest Grape was making a comeback. Look at that. That's fairly easy to find in like the antique malls, estate sales and the like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, I am going to an estate, a private by appointment only a state sale tomorrow and she said i could film so look for that video this weekend all right i had no idea indiana glass was so prolific again all right so we've got a westmoreland now what's really okay this is what's really bugging me why why is it showing me things that don't say opalescent 
Okay, eBay, you are seriously going to upset me. I just got to say. <sighs> Let me go look and see if it's Fenton. Let's just dig into Fenton right here. I tell you, they are messing with the algorithm on a daily basis. You got to be careful. Yeah, too much. So this is where I go over to the site. I love for identifying this stuff because I can go buy motif and I can go into grapes. Look at grapes. And it's going to show me several patterns. Now, Carnival Glass and Opalescent Glass, the companies made the same patterns in both. So you can go through all the grape patterns and the, the way the grapes are lined up is how you look for it. I'm kind of looking here, guys. Hold on. Uh, I'm looking for tree branches. You know what? It's kind of, oh, let's look at this one. Yeah, not so much, huh? We don't have that extra ribbing. Oh, here it is. Here it is. That's it. I do believe that's it. Right? Yes. Yes. Did you say that's it? Uh, I think I think I'm on to it. This pattern is easily confused with Fenton's vintage pattern, but there are distinct differences. Dugans will have the dome base and a break in the pattern between two bunches of grapes. Um, yes, there is a break. There is a break in the pattern, but I am going to go look at this other pattern. Oh, no, 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 I think it's the other one. Nope. Okay. Cause mine doesn't have anything in the center part. And if I go back, Oh, that has it in the center too. Now I'm confused. I don't know which which one do you think it would be? Hmm. Sure does look like this one, but it doesn't have this in the middle. So I would go over back to eBay. And what I would do is put in Dugan. What was it called? Oh, it's called vintage. Well, that's tough because <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of stuff called that. Oh, let's get out of let's get out of the Fenton and let's go into all and see if we can find this one. Yeah, this is a tough one. Hmm. Well, I know it's either Dugan or Fenton. I just like the ruffles different. Yeah. It doesn't have the leaf in the middle. Kind of a mystery. Kind of a mystery piece. That's the fun of this game, though, isn't it? Like not knowing exactly. And then maybe it's just a rare offshoot of it. Who knows? Who knows who goes there? Yeah. Well, this one doesn't, this doesn't have it in the middle either. I'm leaning toward it being Dugan. I'm leaning toward it being Dugan because there is a break between the grapes. Like they said, it's, it's purdy no matter how you uh, slice it. And I know it's worth more than I paid for it, which was what? I paid $16. I paid $16. It's worth that all day long. Oh, Marsha, are you falling asleep? Is that what you were going to type out? <laughs> oh, you think it's Jefferson? I think it's Jefferson. So I would go back to D. Doty or D. Dotty or however that's said and see if there's, is there a Jefferson pattern? I'm saying Jefferson, great. 
So let's go Jefferson. Ooh. Jefferson glass. Oh, nicely done. Nicely. Who who found that? Who who do I high five for finding that that was Jefferson? That's awesome. Look at you go. Sweet. It's Jefferson. It's worth about 25 bucks. Yeah, I see you guys. All right, I'm going to give you a little I'm going to give you a little tip here. If you can't get out to the thrift stores, if you can't go places, go find these sellers that just want to get rid of stuff and are selling things for $10 that should be selling for $30. I'm just saying, go in there, see what else they have so you can combine shipping. All that good stuff. All right, what's in here? What else is in here? Okay, I probably made a mistake on these guys. I got a little into the frenzy of buying and all I saw was Murano Bulls, okay? I was so excited that I found Murano Bulls. He's a hot mess. He's got a chip on his foot. He's got a chip on his horns, both horns. Like, he's a mess. He's a mess. He's going to need a loving home with uh, someone who doesn't mind taking in a, what's the word? A, a, a rescue. <laughs> he needs to be rescued. I paid, uh, not very much though. I got two bowls. One I paid six for, one I paid 16 for. Let me find the other one. Where are you, bully, bully, bully? Bully, bully. Oh, he's probably at the bottom of this box now that I'm looking. All right, we'll come back to the bowl thing. He's a misfit. Yes, he is a misfit. I'm going to place the misfit right over here for now. He still stands up. He still looks good. I got some cute little glasses. Let's see. I don't remember how many there are, though. I think there's four. Are there four? Stand by. I thought there was four. Maybe there's only two. They pack the stuff up for me before I get there, so I don't have a chance to really go through. Maybe there's only two. Is there only two? Let me look. Oh, there's only two. Two tumblers for five bucks. I just thought these were interesting. Look at, they have cattle branding on them. Obviously vintage, um, not marked, but you can see they are older blown glass. He's got a disability. <laughs> He's a handicapped bull, yes, but he can still, he can still fight with the best of them. Um, yeah, so you got a bunch of cowboys on here doing cattle branding. I just thought these were just really cool for five bucks. No idea what they're worth. Uh, without even looking anything up, I, I would I would list these at twenty nine ninety nine in a heartbeat. Like, I like having shelves behind me now. I just gotta say. All right, I was super excited to get this, although it's a little bent. Um, <laughs> So that's the thing about buying on an online auction and auctions are as is, where is like, if they don't disclose the damage pretty much it's on you. Um, so this, I mean, it's not bad. It's got a little bend to it, but this is, what did they call this? Quadruple plate pair point manufacturing company holder. Now this would have held a bride's basket. And I'm kind of wishing I just sold one. I just sold one. Um, but the glass basket sits in here. So I will hold on to this until I find another basket that needs its holder. <laughs> um, it's fun because this has apples on it. Look at Pearpoint is a really good brand. 
quad plate is very desirable and it is marked on here. Yep, yep, yep. I don't know if you'll be able to see all that, but it's on there. I think my camera likes the stuff in the background because when I hold something up, it knows that I'm giving it something close up. So that could work out really well. Yeah. And see all the market. The P in the diamond is the pair point mark. I only paid $8 for this. I want to show you, though, I did look this up as the auction was going. And I want to show you what I found. It's super cool. So if we look up pair point quadruple plate, there we go. Very desirable. There's a basket. Now this one's like a complete basket. Here we go. Very similar. It's just the holder. That sold for more than $80 right there. Um, so that piece, that what did I say I paid for it? $8? It's worth $80 without even putting a basket in it which is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Um, but I want to complete it. I want it to be the full thing. Oh, there's the apple, apple pattern there. And again, you're going to go down here and you're going to see others that sold just so cheap that it makes you cringe. And you have to ignore those when you're looking at your comps. You have to, have to, have to ignore those low. You, that's why you sort by highest, always sort by highest so that you are pricing for the highest. We can make the trend. Pairpoint is the glass company. That's what's interesting is that um, it's not usually the silver plate company. Let's see, I got all kinds of like little loose stuff in here. Hold on. Oh, a shark. That got me. Oh, I. I needed a mirror for my bathroom. And so they listed this as a wall mirror. I paid, my goodness, I paid, where is it? Darn it. Um, 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 um. Why is this? There it is. I paid $14 thinking this was a full size mirror. It's not, it's a little baby mirror. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, but um, that's not really going to do the trick in my, in my bathroom. So, all righty then. That's why you have to be careful and never overpay for anything. That's hilarious. You know, the landlord was over here on Saturday. And I was pointing out that the mirror was missing from the bathroom. And she goes in and she goes, it is? Oh, it is. How do you not notice it missing? So this bull, this bull's in a little bit better shape. Okay. He's only got one chipped horn and it's a little longer and a little chip on his tail. So not bad. Not bad. See his silver Aventurina there. Really cool. But yeah, they're both kind of misfits. If I was listing those on eBay, I would do them in auction format, start them hmm, right above what I paid for them, and let them go. Just let them go. Hey, but if you guys want them in the live sale next week, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll put them on eBay. New problemo. What are you guys, what are you guys talking about? Tiffany style lambs. Oh, I've got two. No, I got a couple more. Oh, this, oh, this bottle must have gone with the other bottles. So I got one more bottle in here. Bottle. It's a bottle. It's a little, a little chippy. It's pretty clean. But again, look at the construction of the bottle. I know 
that that has a lot to do with dating these old guys. And so this one's cool. Um, oh, I got a little mustard jar. I paid just, I just saw it, $6 for this little guy. For the little mustard jar, it's just, oh, my camera is very happy with, um, with the shelves behind me. It has a mark on the bottom, but I cannot read what that mark says. But it's a cute little mustard jar. Voila. And then I have some salts and I paid, how much did I pay for the salts? Stand by. I paid, how much did I pay? Where's my salts? Oh, there they are, $6. $6 for the little EAPG salts. Early American press glass is what that stands for. It used to be the days where you had, you had a master salt and then everybody in their place setting had their own little individual salt dish. And they used to have little spoons, little baby spoons. If you ever find the spoons, um, hold on to those till you find the little salts. But everybody would then season their food with the salt. Salt was really, really big back then because they didn't have refrigerators. Just saying, they, you know, so maybe the stuff didn't taste so hot because it might not have been so fresh. Oh, I am so bummed right now. And I don't know if this happened before or after the auction. They did not list this as, as is. So it is what it is, though. I paid six bucks for... The little Royal Winton Chintz creamer and sugar, but I'll show you. I just noticed. Boom. Darn it. Darn it. Um, I may still offer this, you know, in the live sale. Some of you can overlook some of the chips and I start stuff at $1. There we go. Welbeck. Royal Winton Welbeck. Um, I started at a dollar, so... There we go. It is beautiful though. Come on. I do love how this is behaving. Oh, look. That's got a big old chip on it too. What the? Anyway, so there's that. Fortunately, this is the thing. Don't pay too much for stuff. That is the key to not losing money. Pay as if it's messed up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That is my little little take. Yeah, they're doing they're doing some more auctions. I'm going to be a lot more careful looking at their pictures. They're taking their pictures on a lace background and it's super hard to really see the details of things. Now, I thought about, you know, kind of giving them advice to make their pictures better, but I kind of like that I could get some bargains because they're not taking very good pictures. And I know some of you think, oh, that's kind of taking advantage of them. I'm like, no, it's not because they have every opportunity to do their homework and figure out, you know, that their pictures are not bringing them very big profits. So if they reached out and asked me what they could do to make their auction sales better, then I would ethically feel that I needed to give them an honest answer, but I'm going to stick with the don't ask, don't tell theory for now and um, get some cool stuff. Oh, you got something damaged today too. Yeah, I bought a, an electric heater that I was all excited to bring home and plug in behind me. And it didn't work. And I did reach out and told them right away that it didn't work. And she goes, oh, it worked when it was here. I said, well, it don't work now. She says, okay, we'll take care of you. So, hoping. It was only $11, so it's all good. Yep. 
How do you pick what auction to use? Um, so there is a site, that, well, there's a couple of sites. Um, there's auctionzip.com that can find auctions in your area. There is also estate sales, is it the .org or .net? Stand by, um, because there's two of them. It's .org, so estate sales, dot org uh is the better of the two and you can go in and put in your zip code and not only find auctions but you can also find estate sales near you so those are the two sites that i use yep and then if they let you have a preview go preview you know go look at the stuff in person um but a lot of them aren't doing that because of cousin rona so I am, oh, you're asking Carrie where she's at. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just, ugh, I really want this whole thing to be over with. I really, 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 really do. My pastor's wife is sick right now. So it's been a lot of people like nearby. I am so protected. You guys, like some of the comments I get, be careful, Danny, use gloves do this, do that. Like, trust me. I have been a germaphobe since before all this. So I work very hard. Um, even before this, I've worked very hard at keeping myself from getting anything that is being passed by other people. So I have trained myself not to touch my, my face. Um, and you know, the mask does kind of help me for that. It's like a reminder for some people it makes them touch their face, but you know, it's just don't touch your face. You touch the stuff. Don't touch your face. As long as it stays on your hand, you're not going to get it. It's when you take it from your hand and then you touch your face or you rub your eyes or, or do something like that. You know, as long as you're keeping your distance and all that good stuff and take your zinc and your vitamin D, everybody, everybody who's watching this right now, I got over 200 people here. There's your biggies. Get your immune system ready for this. Zinc and vitamin D. Everybody, take them, take them, take them, take them. And we will all get through this. I will, I will put all of this stuff through, Except for the except for the bride's basket, I'm actually going to look for an insert to that before I sell it. I'm going to look for the glass insert. But yeah, almost everything you see here is going to be on. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is jewelry. But next Friday, the... What is next Friday? The 22nd will be hard goods again. And all of this stuff will be in that sale as well as lots more. Yep. Zinc and D, zinc and D. <laughs> Email Danny about what a what a. Email me about what? Oh, wow. You just picked up over 300 pieces of vintage and antique glass in China for under $30 at auction on KBID. Oh. <gasps> That's amazing. Oh, you guys, the stuff is out there. It's the stuff is out there. You just got to make sure you get it listed and sold. Joni! I know it is late over on the East Coast for some of you. Yeah, it's going to be in the auction because I really want to just start it. I don't know. I will say that. Send me an offer. What the heck? Send me an offer. <laughs> I have plenty of stuff to sell. Yeah. So oh, real quick. So what do you guys think of the new shipping setup? Did you like the angle and the like the view better with my new setup? Give me some feedback on that. Because it's still a work in progress. I'm going to hang my packing peanuts up so that um, I have one of those shoot things. You know, I can just put the packing peanuts in. I got to figure out how to hang up the bubble wrap. Like I am so excited. I'm going to put... Uh, a desk and my Rolo printer out there so that after I package things, I can stick it right on the scale and print the, the packing labels, the packing labels, the shipping labels right there out in the garage. 
and then it never has to come back in the house again. It can go right into my car. Um, I haven't done, I haven't done carrier pickup yet. I'm a little nervous. My address is a little wonky and my mail for this address is actually delivered about a block away. So I don't, I don't know if I'm going to make my poor mail person upset. <laughs> I have a PO box that I'm thinking I'm just going to forward everything to my PO box and just visit my PO box regularly. <laughs> Your daughter won't like it if I hang up the peanuts. She wants to dive into them. Eh, I don't think diving into them would be so fun. <laughs> Maybe for a kid, though. Maybe a more down camera view. Yeah, it's a little tough because of where the shelf is and where I can actually set up the camera. I'm still working on it. Still working. I might get really fancy schmancy and figure out how to do two cameras. Like one from like right down on it and then the one that's at the angle now. I don't know. I want to do some fun new things for 2021. And uh, I got big plans. <laughs> big plans for this year. Um, kind of like, okay, those of you stuck around or here, here's one of my big plans. I'm going to voice it, manifest it, make it happen. I want to open a thrift store. I want to open a thrift store. I want to veer my focus into helping the reseller community find stuff to sell. So there. So through my nonprofit, I can open the thrift store and do my reseller boxes and all that good stuff. I want to help you guys be more profitable and find more stuff. So that's, that's my 2021 goal. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so the challenge with George, something might be changing with that because um, Dominic asked me today if I could do it sooner because he had somebody drop out. So I said I couldn't because of the move and everything. So he was going to ask George to do it sooner. So George might be up against somebody else this month. And then I would be up against somebody else next month. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> as long as I don't slap people. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I got to go over to the niche to profit group and go finish up the throwback Thursday thread. Uh, so if you're over there, I go through every Thursday, you can post an item that you've had listed for over three months. It hasn't sold, can't figure it out. And I give you some things you can do to change up that listing and get it sold. I love when I am able to tell people, you know what? Double your price. I do that a lot because uh, sometimes price too cheap can keep you from selling it. Yep. You you would really like to see photo framed artwork with glass in it. You mean see me ship? Because I've done that. There's some. I have some shipping videos of me shipping art with glass. Yep. Generally, bigger pieces of art. I'll be honest with you. I take those bigger pieces of art over to a packing place and let them deal with it. It costs about $25 for me to pay my, my packing place to do something large, like a piece of art. And then they supply the box, the bubble wrap, the whatever inserts, whatever. Um, and the, and the work. And to me, 20, 25 bucks is totally worth it. Um, to avoid that frustrating. It, it takes a good, uh, the very minimum, it's going to take 15, 20 minutes minimum to do a piece of art, more like 30 minutes. I want that time back. Oh, taking the photos, you get too much glare. So a little trick I learned about taking photos of art with glass is lay it so that it's facing a plain, you know, like a white ceiling. And then get your angle kind of coming in from the top. It's hard to explain. Yeah, maybe I'll do a video on that because it is tricky. It can be tricky. You got to, yeah, not get the glare. Yeah. 
Yeah, Melissa just posted the shipping one of that. Yeah. Would I sell glasses as a set of eight or break it into two sets of four? It's going to depend. Um, it's going to depend on the desirability of the set. So a set that's not as high of a desirability, I would probably do the eight to get the bigger price. If it's a highly desirable uh, maker or pattern, I'm going to break it into a lower quantity to just kind of take advantage of that. So, yep. Okay. I hear Noah cooking. I actually smell Noah cooking and it smells really good. He's making us steak and barbecued potatoes tonight. We tried a new service. This is our first meal with this new service. So far, I'm not super impressed by the, um, by the, the quantity of ingredients that they give. But we're gonna try it out. Noah's my chef and I promised him I would not stay on here longer than an hour and I have. <laughs> so everyone, thanks for hanging out with me, going through some stuff. And come back tomorrow for the live sale with jewelry and small stuff. Start everything at a dollar. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one. Good night, everyone.